Hey there, YouTube friends. Just as I said in my Facebook posting, I wanted to do a box wine challenge. Reason is, these things have been coming out more and more, and I've seen them in the liquor stores, and wondered how good could box wine really be? The really only other wines that I've ever tried in a box wine has been Franza, and I'm not saying that it was bad wine, but it never has been of a quality that I feel like that I could have gotten out of a bottle. So this challenge includes some of the more popular brands of newer box wines that have come out that apparently have won some awards, but also in one of these cases uh, is a bottled wine that they decided to, to put into a bag, in a box wine. I think the only really way of knowing whether how good these wines really are was be able to test them and compare them amongst their own peers. So I've got four box wines here, of which I've had three of them, but I've never really been able to compare them against one another. So I thought today I would do that and I could give you at least some scientific study as to how good these box wines are and how they compare against each other. Whether you want to consider it scientific or not is up to you. But I feel like the only way to really compare the wines would be to taste them amongst their peers and be able to talk about them openly. And so this is what we're going to do. Well, first of all, let me introduce these wines. This is a fisheye. I actually had this in Denver. Really good at the time, really portable is what I was looking for. I was in some training and it turned out really, really well. So I wanted to include that. This black box, I think it's been around for a while as well. Uh, one of my cousins actually really, really likes that wine. I can't remember what that tasted like, but we're gonna try that again today. Boda Brick had that several weeks ago. Thought that was a pretty good wine. Uh, it also comes in two sizes. This one is the smaller of the two sizes. The rest of these come in uh, one size only, which is a three liter, that's a 1.5 liter. And then the Estancia, which is an interesting box wine, had that one about, probably about 10 years ago in Slidell, Louisiana and it was a wine tasting and really thought that was a, a great bottled wine and really surprised to find that at our local liquor store. So we're gonna include that one as well. They're all approximately about, at least from the three liter sizes, about 20 to $23 dollars a, a box. This Boda Bricks here, uh, being that half the size, you can pick these up for about $10. Uh, the other thing that I also want to note is that there's actually more than four, these four that you can find uh, in your or at your local liquor store. I chose these four because uh, they seem to be pretty popular and, and, and easily to find. I think once we establish, if you want to call it a winner, uh, we'll put that box up against some of the other boxes that I've seen uh, and maybe we'll call it a wine challenge number two. So let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first wanted to kind of talk about these box wines. They, of course, have these little handles here, easy to carry. Uh, they also have these little spouts that supposedly allow for easy pouring, but also doesn't allow any air into the bottle, which I thought was uh, kind of interesting. I don't know how long they really last. I'll be honest, I probably drink a bottle uh, about every two days because I love wines, I can be a wine snob, uh, if you ask some of my, my peers or my family or friends. But let's go and open this one up. This one here says open here, you can see that. Push that box here, put that up. Pretty fairly easy, as you can see. We'll see how standard these really are. This one here has a black spout with a red button on it and a little 
safety seal there, so probably want to make sure that that is intact. Uh, sits easy within this little cradle. We'll go ahead and put it in there. Close this up and pull the safety seal. Okay. So I've got my water here just to kind of clean the palette. My first glass. And I've actually got some, some matzo bread just if in case I wanted to kind of cleanse the palate. But let's see how this goes. All right, first one, Fish Eye, Cabernet Sauvignon, Southeast Australia, 2018. One thing to also note, I've also chosen cabs for all four of these. I wanted to, of course, be able to compare them uh, against the their own blends and, uh, and strains of grapes. So this particular, these four are probably some of my f most favorite grapes as far as cabs, and especially drinking them in the colder months, uh, like where we are right now in almost uh, December. And the flavoring, I, I think the great thing about being able to test them against uh, each other is that not all wines, of course, will have the exact same characteristics, but I think from a cab perspective, you should see them as being a full-bodied wine. Uh, I've also would characterize them as having some dark cherries, uh, some some blackberries. Uh, there's also some spiciness that can be associated with them, and sometimes they can have a dry finish. Uh, I think they tend to have somewhat a, of a longer finish, uh, but we'll see if any of these are on the drier side or if they are on the spicy side. So I uh, just wanted to talk about the, the cabs um, as far as just what I would expect. So let's go ahead and get started here. Fish eye, pouring this one. Let's see how easy it does pour. I'll kind of do this. Ooh, wow, it shoots out there. Let's, let's try this this way. Wow, it's kind of a... Lots of, I'll pour a little bit more, there you go. All right, so this is the fish eye. I'll put this one up first. Kind of do a taste. Hmm, not bad. Do a little swirling. This is uh, just considered as aeration, kind of livens up the wine as it's been sitting in the bottle, or in this case, the bag. Try to open up some of the flavoring. Do you smell some cherries? Not the strongest notes from the from the nasally or the nose that I'm getting, but doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad wine by any means. So let's go ahead and taste this one. You can see my pinky might be up at times, just depending on how many glasses of wine that I've had or if it's a, a really nice bottle. Let's try this one again. Just another technique of trying to aerate the wine. I'll bring it to the front part of my mouth and, and Kind of breathe in to try to aerate. Okay, fish eye. I'd say that it did have some some cherry notes. It's it's definitely on the on the lighter side. I probably wouldn't have expected it. I don't know that it, I get the same feeling that I had when I had it in Denver. It might be because I was uh, just where I was at and the people I was with. But it's definitely smooth, uh, doesn't have any dusty notes to it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of those, but still a good wine. Maybe a little bit peppery. I do get a little sour aftertaste. I'm not sure if I remember that, but I uh, don't, not a big fan of that but 
we'll, we'll let it sit and breathe a little bit and open up these other wines. So let's put this over to the side here. And I'm gonna actually go on to the Boda Brick here. So I'm gonna move this one down. This one I actually had several weeks ago. I was kind of contemplating bringing home a, a box wine just because we had gone through a, a good amount of, of bottled wine recently. And I thought, well, if there was convenience in the equation, I think I would try one of these. So I picked up one of these smaller uh, box, 1.5 liters. And I was actually surprised, so let's go ahead and give it a shot. It does have, and I tend to shy away from these awards or best buys or medals that people seem to maybe look at if they're a label reader. I am definitely not a label reader, but this one does say wine, 40, 40 wine enthusiast best buys, over 30 gold medals. I don't know where they get the gold medals, to be honest with you. I mean, it's probably like going to a, a first grade basketball or baseball game, they could probably just hand these out like uh, participation awards is my guess. But let's go ahead and open this one up. Let me get my glass. Okay, same push button tab to open that one up. Put that over there. Pops up like that. Oh, same spout as the other one goes into this little cradle here. We'll pop this down so I can get this. Pop this down, there you go. That's probably how it should look. And we'll pull the safety seal and go to it here. Uh, let's see, lift up here. Oh, wow. Almost feel like I have to go to the bathroom. All right, so photo brick. Let's try this one. Not very strong notes of anything right now. Air it out a little bit. I'm gonna take a piece of this cracker. I kind of still taste that sourness from the last bottle. Okay. Not really strong notes of anything. Another thing you can do is kind of tilt your glass and kind of see the thickness of the wine as it kind of thins out toward the uh, ends there. Probably make you feel like a little bit more like a wine snob. Uh, the other thing you can do is as the, as the wine settles back down in the glass, you can check to see the, uh, the legs on it, I think is what they, they call it, uh, see how viscous or uh, thick the, the wine, the viscosity of the wine can be. Just a characteristic, not necessary by any means, but sometimes just make you feel like you're being more critical. Bodebrit. Yeah. So this also is not a very complex wine. I'd say it's also somewhat on the lighter side. Definitely tastes some drier finish, which is different than uh, the fisheye there. Also kind of has a sour, kind of that sour aftertaste. Uh, not sure, I've just gotten over a cold, so I'm not sure if that has anything to do with uh, the way that my taste buds are working right now, but. I'd say this one probably still has, or has more of the characteristics of what I would consider a cab. Uh, not from the notes initially, uh, but as far as the, the taste, uh, it does have a longer finish and it's a little bit drier. Uh, on my uh, taste buds, so I do like that. 
Probably should take it easy. We've got two more boxes to go here. All right. So that's not bad either. We'll come back to that one. Put that there. Black box. So same gold medal stamp here. We'll go ahead and read that. 70 wine enthusiast best buys. Oh, I'm sorry. 70 gold medals, 34 best buys from wine enthusiasts. So if we were going to rank that, maybe black box is a higher rated wine. Same opening here. I think probably it's going to have the same spout on it. It's my guess. Oh, 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 look at this. Look at this. Different spout, as you can see there. Different spout. There is no safety seal. I'm not sure if I should be concerned about that. Definitely different here. Not sure if that's going to make a difference or not, but let's go ahead and see. Put this back on. Go. Okay. So there's this one. It looks like I have to understand this correctly. It might be the challenge. Oh, nope. Got to pull off that little seal there. Now it looks like this. And my third glass. I will now attempt to pour this in. I think I probably just lift here on this. Wow, much more convenient. I would say this one is definitely the better spout of, of box wines. So I'll put that right here, down. Let's try this one. Again, not getting the strongest notes, but Again, it's not any different than these other ones. This one to note is a cab from Chile, or Chile. It also says premium wine. I'm not sure if that means anything or not. We'll find out. Oh, this one's different. does have the dry finish. Again, not very complex or uh, I, I guess a deep uh, tasting wine. Doesn't have a lot of depth to it. This one is a little different. This one's hard to describe. I'm not sure what my cousin was thinking when he said this is hands down the winner. Doesn't really have a a starting note, but the finishing notes or characteristics, I'd say it is mildly dry. Has a little bit of a finish on it. Definitely more dusty, for sure. So I, I would say this wine here maybe feels more like an Italian, uh, Italian like Sangiovese uh, type of wine that can, or, or Chianti that can be somewhat earthy. Uh, I know that's probably a difficult characteristic, uh, you probably wouldn't think that something earthy or dusty would be uh, desirable, uh, but it can actually bring out uh, flavoring of food uh, when paired well, so just keep that in mind. Just We're going to keep it up in mind today. that one was much better. It's very even tempered wine. It does have kind of the dusty 
dry note at the end, but still not, not a very complex wine. But again, $20 a bottle for these, or a box for these three liters and about $10 for the 1.5. So again, you kind of have to keep that in mind. A, a bottle of decent wine, I would say, runs us uh, about, uh, use about $12, which is uh, for 750 milliliters which is half this size here. So just keep that in mind. All right, moving on. Wow, cracker here. Okay. So I'm actually kind of really excited about this one. This is the Estancia. This one might have been a little bit more expensive. I think I might have paid $23. So about $3 more, not that much more expensive. So the Estancia, let's just take a quick read of this. This is a two, uh, 2017 Cab Sav. It's from uh, Paso Robles. It is a claimed vineyard, which I would agree with that. Uh, and they've been uh, making wines for over 30 years, so. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and open this one up. Oh, Notables, award-winning winery, a history of 90 plus scores and 150 medals. Probably not their box wine, probably more their bottles, but it's okay. All right, let's pull this out. Okay, let's see, does anybody wanna guess the the nipple on this one and see what quality it is. Ah, apparently the one that I really like. So again, this one is like black box. It's got the nice, I will say this is the much nicer dispenser. Okay, so I have to rip off the tab here. Just like that, very easy, I like it. And my extra glass, and I'm gonna pour. Wow, there we go. Get the last of that. Kind of move this down. There we go. All right, let's try this one. Get some air in it. Lighten up the grapes here. Again, not the most nasally wine as far as the notes that it brings out just from the initial uh, smell of it here, but I'm not uh, necessarily cons consider that a, a, a negative feature with the wines that I'm having so far. They're all pretty consistent. Do a check here. It does look a little more, more dense. So let's see if the flavors come out a little bit better. I'd say the one thing that is different about this one is I'm not getting that strong stronger, I'll say strong, but stronger sour aftertaste. Try this again. Wow. Get some dryness right here on the end of my tongue. Which is interesting. I believe on this one, I got dryness as far as the finish all along the side of my tongue. It's it's one of those interesting things that as you start tasting wines, you'll notice regions of your of your tongue and your taste buds that uh, will will start to to awaken uh, or and be uh, activated when you when you drink wine. Let's try this again.
Yeah, definitely I would say probably the driest out of all of these. And I get that dryness right on the end of my tongue, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So this was the Estancia. All right, so the next thing that I'll do is I'll, I'll try and compare the wines against each other and try to declare some of the, excuse me, characteristics of the wines that I really like and things that maybe I don't. And it's best to, to try them against each other could you tend to forget what they would taste like or or how good or how not so good that wine was when you compare it uh, with another wine of either greater or lesser quality? So let's go and do that now. Pull this back just a little bit. Room. Okay. Woo! Starting to feel a little bit. So let's try these two, the Black Box and the Estancia. They tended to get, have a little bit more complexity and have a little more dryness to them. And I think I said that this one was a little bit earthy. So let's confirm that. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm not, when I compare the two, let me try that one more time. Yeah, when I compare these two, I'd have to say the Estancia is probably the better of the two. This finish here is it's really kind of confusing me as far as when I taste it, I, I don't necessarily oh, am pleased about what I'm tasting. Maybe almost a little confused. So I'll try that one more time. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the Estancia, this one. This finish on this black box is a little perplexing. So we're gonna pull this one back here. So now we'll try the Boda Brick here with the Estancia. Palette here. Oh, excuse me. All right. So this is the body brick. Try this one first. We had some technical difficulties, so I'm not sure how much of that we lost. But I, I want to explain that that the Boda is, it's also a consistent taste. I did have some fruity notes uh, as I drank that as well. And it was definitely a pleasant finish. It's definitely on the lighter side. I would say this Estancia is probably more complex. Uh, it's, a, it's a deeper uh, flavor to it or taste to it uh, that I really enjoy. So let me chase this one one more time. Yeah. No. 
It's also probably a little bit of bubbliness. Just from the beginning of that. So these are actually very close. I would say from a price perspective, the Boda Box is definitely a better value, but not by really much. You can get the smaller boxes, which can be convenient. But as far as taste-wise, I would say this one is a little bit lighter, a little more lively when it hits the palate. This one is definitely, if you're kind of in a laid back mood or, or eating a nice meal, uh, the, the complexity of this one and the, and the deeper taste to it, I think really would add to your meal. This one probably would go good probably any point at your dinner, either beginning and or middle. So I'm gonna keep both of these in mind. Let's, let's now go back to this one, which is the fish eye. So this is the fish eye here. Fish eye, Boda, Estancia. Let's try this one. Ooh, I actually get cinnamon this time. Fish eye. Wow. I never would have expected cinnamon as the as the aromatics. And this is just allowing the wine to breathe in the last probably 20 minutes. So pretty amazing here. Let's Wow. Just when I thought fisheye was not going to make my top list yet, right? is it just because I've had too many? Or is it because this one seems to wake up after 10 or 15 minutes? Hmm. I'm smelling the cinnamon. I feel like I'm on an episode of Sideways. Jeez. Definitely cinnamon. Okay, I, this is why we go back through the wines to taste them because ultimately the taste can change as the, as the wines liven up, so amazing. I'm gonna keep fish eye on this one in the top three here. And still I'm gonna go back to the black box because I feel like I need to give that one a chance because it's a premium box wine. But as far as taste, I would say the cinnamon, the fish eye would make a great just to drink wine. I don't know that the cinnamon would add anything to a dinner. Generally, you want to try and drink wines that complement a dinner. It'd be, it may be difficult to, to pair that cinnamon taste with something you're eating unless it's maybe on the blander side. I'm kind of a spicy guy. So let me try the Boda Box again. I, I'm good with Boda Box. I, if, if this, if I was going to rate quality or, or taste versus price, I would say the Boda Box is on the top of my list. It's being the cheapest, it's, and matches right up with these other ones. I mean, this Estancia is just consistent. I think I could drink that one. And I usually don't like the pretty boxes here. I try to stay away from advertising, the, the, the cost of advertising to make things perceive, perception uh, as far as marketing to 
to sell it as opposed to the actual the the actual good the goods that you're trying to uh, consume, but consistent. Okay, so I'm getting a little. How should I say? Uh, I won't say drunk. I am getting a little bit of a buzz here, but it also is allowing me to maybe relax uh, my taste buds and my palate. So I'm gonna just go back one more time to this to this black box. Yeah, I. Of course, when you drink this much wine, and the black box is uh, more palatable, but I don't know that I would. Uh, I don't know that I would go with that one. So let's go back to the Boda. It's just a fun wine. I. I don't know why. I have nothing negative to say about it. I definitely like that one. Fish eye. Again, different. I, I wouldn't necessarily characterize it as a cab. It, it, it's probably like, like where it comes from, from Southeast Australia. It, it probably is more on the lines of uh, Yellowtail maybe like a Shiraz because of the uh, the pepperiness of the cinnamon that's in there. I think that one's fine as well. The Estancia. This one being a little bit more expensive, I if I had to choose a daily wine that I would keep uh, in my in my wine cabinet for daily drinking, I, I think I'd have the Estancia, for sure. I, I wouldn't shy away from these other ones, but if I wanted to pay the extra three or four dollars, I think I would get the Estancia. If I'm gonna rank these, I'm gonna say Estancia, a close second and third is the Boda Box and Fish Eye. Cousin, I don't know if your rating on my Facebook page was accurate, but I'm going to give this one the fourth place vote, the Black Box. So Estancia one, Boda two, close, third, Fish Eye, and Black Box. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Look for wine challenge number two. We're gonna take this Estancia up against some of the other box wines that I can find in the area. But this has been fun. I'm glad you could be here with me. If I were to be savvy enough, I would say subscribe, look for this link somewhere in this area. I haven't worked it out yet on my, on my video, but that's where it would be. And have a great weekend, guys. Have a great day. God bless.